Would you like to know what the most powerful emergency preparedness tool you have in your medicine cabinet is? Isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol is so versatile, it can do so many things, it's so underutilized. Even me as a medic that I have bought and used it for years, I didn't have any idea how many different things you could use it for until I received a flyer uh, or an email the other day from uh, a company that was uh, kind of doing a public service announcement, 16 things you can do with isopropyl alcohol as well as a little history of it. So I thought that's really interesting. And I always figure if something's interesting to me, it's probably interesting to other people as well. So what is isopropyl alcohol and, and uh, what are these 16 things? Isopropyl alcohol comes in two forms. Usually you can buy this at your pharmacies or drug stores. You'll find it in 70% or a 90%. Both of these, whichever one you have, will work in all of these tips I'm going to share with you. Uh, a little history on it that's interesting. So the term rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, it used to be called rubbing alcohol, was commonly used with, uh, in, with massage. And I don't know if it's alcohol as nature of, is it intracellular, extracellular? I forget from anatomy class. Uh, but it gets in and it helps penetrate into deep tissue and assists with massage. I don't know. They also called it, or they, in the 20s, and this was during Prohibition, they wanted to distinguish this from normal alcohol, as we know during Prohibition, you know, alcohol was, was illegal. And they were concerned that folks were going to buy this up and, and be drinking it as a replacement, right? So they called it rubbing alcohol to distinguish that uh, so it was clear that this was a medical item and not for consumption. Uh, very interesting. So let's get into it. Number one, and the one that I, one, the reason why I stocked it, you know, right before the first lockdown, um, you know, when we were stocking up on first aid supplies, I bought a couple cases of this. So if you don't have this, you might pause your video right now and go see if you can find it before it's gone because this is almost impossible uh, to find these days. Every store that I went to looking for a 90% solution for this video um, said it's out and it goes immediately. Um, I don't know. It, I guess I'm not the only one that knows how useful it is. Number one, of course, is a disinfectant. Now, this might be for uh, sterilizing uh, medical equipment. Uh, if you need to uh, do suturing, well, lots of different things, anything that you might need to do or tools, if you can simply dip it in there or, or coat it down, it's going to completely sterilize it uh, and make it a lot safer for you to use. So you don't need to, this is very concentrated, you don't need to go straight. So the, usually the solution uh, is eight to one. That's eight ounces of, of, of water for one ounce of isopropyl alcohol. And how you can measure that quickly is your normal tablespoon. That's typically half an ounce. So just figure 16 tablespoons of water and one tablespoon of isopropyl alcohol. You can also mix it up as a disinfectant. That would be number two. Uh, one thing that I was going to do here is I had several of these bottles of little bottles from um, uh, that you get when you get glasses that you can um, um, drain them out or if they're empty, and you can mix these up. Just take a moment and uh, put uh, some black tape, a little gaffer's tape around there, and write what that, that is on there. That's a disinfectant. Now, there are, disinfectant, of course, is available to stores now, but there was a time a few months ago, remember, when we couldn't get it. So having this uh, in a pocket or in your purse or something, you could simply spray it and you can make your own with isopropyl alcohol. Number three, isopropyl alcohol is a great fire starter. Now, you've seen the alcohol stoves that uh, caterers use and such, but uh, whether you have it in the bottle like this or you have even the alcohol hand wipes, those make great fire starter. But you can just pour it on different things, but I'll just show you here. Here's a small piece of cotton, and by... If we just put a little bit of that on there, it will light right up the 70 or the 90%. So... If you have hand sanitizer or something, you know, this in your first aid kits in your car and you get stranded somewhere, a great fire starter uh, and probably a little bit safer to use than uh, your gasoline. Number four is it's a great way to sanitize your kitchen sponges, your, your sp scrubber sponges that you have in the kitchen. You know, those things, if they're not, uh, if you don't keep up after them, they're just a breeding ground for bacteria. You can just pour just a shallow layer in a pan and you can put those sponges in there and rinse them out and they'll just come out uh, smelling clean and nice, even better than when you put them in the dishwasher. Number five, and something that I had no idea of and I wished I had was apparently this is really good for tick removal. We don't have any right now, but in the summertime at our old place, uh, when Lucy would come in, she would always, almost always have a tick on her. And we went through all sorts of different things, trying to figure out ways to get them off of her. Um, and according to the 
uh, what I've researched, that if you take your isopropyl and you put it on a, on a little cotton ball and part the hair and put it right on top of that tick, that it'll back itself off e even if it's deep and you can pull it right off. So that's something I'll try next summer, but uh, tick removal. Number six, you can use it for clearing water out of your ears. Have you ever been to a pool, went underwater and get water in your ear and every time you move, you know, you, it's rubbing, I mean, it's maddening, right? I've never known how to deal with that. Take a 50-50 mix, take a teaspoon of alcohol and a teaspoon of white vinegar and put your head on your side and either put it in a dropper or you could pour it in with a spoon. And when it combines with the water, alcohol combines, I think, really well with water. I know that my granddad used to put alcohol in gas tanks that it would bind with the water and burn out through the engine from condensation. But apparently, if you do that, it'll bind with that water and you move your head and drain it out and it will help relieve those symptoms and get that water out of your ear canal. Number seven is, of course, you can use it for sterilizing medical equipment. Uh, when Miss, uh, Miss Pants, or Lucy, our dog, uh, she came in a few years ago and she had a terrible gash upon her front shoulder. I, I never knew what happened. I think maybe she jumped over a fence post and got caught or something. But we had to sew her up, and I used isopropyl alcohol, um, much to her chagrin, <laughs> to, uh, to clean out the wound as well as saline and to sterilize um, the uh, suture needle that we use. So, of course, sterilizing equipment. Uh, if you need to make an incision or anything for basic first aid. And number eight is cleaning out wounds, building on that, the last one there. Of course, yeah, you can use it as direct irrigation. It's going to sting. <laughs> it's going to hurt, but uh, if it hurts, it's good, right? Uh, but you can put that on a cotton ball or a paper towel, uh, and you can clean out uh, uh, wounds um, and, and get any bacteria and, and different nasty things in there. Uh, it's great for that sort of disinfecting. Number nine is you can treat nail fungus. I've never had nail fungus before, fortunately, but I know a lot of people that, that have. You can do a mix, and I don't know what the mix is. It's probably uh, probably very similar, you know, maybe a four to one or something like that, uh, and base, make a small foot bath. Put that in there and do that daily, and uh, soak your feet in there, and apparently it will kill those funguses off. I know Jack had an infected toenail a while back, um, and we used a combination of Epsom salts as well as alcohol to keep that clean, and uh, he didn't end up have to go into the hospital. Uh, so uh, nail fungus, that was one that I did not know. Number 10 is homemade ice packs. This is one I didn't know as well. If you do a three to one solution, uh, three parts water, one part alcohol, and you put it in a, a freezer Ziploc bag and freeze that in the freezer, the alcohol will keep it, will make it pliable because the alcohol doesn't freeze or has a different freezing temperature. So you can, if you were to put that in a plastic bag with just ice, it would be hard. And if you have a wound or a sore muscle, you know, it's hard, it's nice to get good coverage. Having that three to one mix in there will make that pliable and you can wrap that ice pack around the wound or the swollen area and then a, a towel and, uh, and get better coverage. So it keeps it, keeps it pliable and keeps it from freezing. So that, that's a one I did not know. Number 11 is soothing bug bites. Um, I did know that, I have used it. Bug bites and, and also for some people have had, will get relief from bee stings. I've often wondered those little bee sting packets you get in the first aid kit, if that's really nothing more than just a, an alcohol pad, but soothing bug bites and bee stings. Number 12, you can use it on your windshield if you live in a cold climate that frosts over uh, to prevent it from icing up and freezing. This is one I've not tried, but I'm gonna try it on the adventure van. The recipe is five to one, five parts water, one part alcohol, and if you clean your window, spray it on the outside and then wipe it, wipe it down, apparently that solution will prevent um, the window from icing up and you repeat that once a week. So I'll try that and mix that five to one up and uh, report back to you on there, but window de-icer. Number 13 is bug repellent. You can take your isopropyl alcohol and use it straight in a spray bottle, and I guess it really knocks out bed bugs and fruit flies. So that's something I've never tried. I, I have not liked using bug repellent. Um, of course, I've always used the DEET. Um, I try not to get it on my skin. It just seems and feels so toxic. Uh, I'll give this a try in the spring when we go uh, backpacking and, and camping, put it in a spray bottle and see if that works, because that would be a whole lot better than uh, putting DEET all over your skin. Number 14 is relieving sore muscles the rubbing alcohol part of it. Uh, the 70% is a little bit less uh, inflammatory. Uh, some people will react to the 90%, but the 70%, if you put it on sore muscles, uh, maybe Mrs. W on my back after the dirt, <laughs> I, rode, I rode that timber sled yesterday and uh, realized how, how, and how 
bad of shape I'm in after uh, uh, well, being a little bit lazy this winter. Uh, but apparently you put it on the sore muscles and rub it in, use a generous amount until it's dry, and it can bring uh, relief for sore muscles. Number 15, apparently a lot of people are able to get relief from nausea by just the sm smelling of the alcohol. Uh, you can put it on a, a rag or, or cotton balls. And I read some studies when I was doing some research for this that 50% of the people that were suffering from nausea had better results from just breathing in the vapors off of the rubbing alcohol than they did from uh, latest gen med medic medications. So if you suffer from nausea or something like that, give it a shot. I've never tried that before. I've never had nausea, but uh, next time I do, I will, uh, I'll try it. Number 16 is herbal liniments. Now, apparently, if you take a small jar and you have different herbs or things that might bring relief from itching or, or things like that, that you can basically do a mix and get, make kind of a slurry, and it helps when you apply it, it helps to, to spread it around, and also that penetrating uh, nature that alcohol has, some people believe that it might even help the herbs get into the skin or into the wounded area, and it'll also preserve them, so they'll keep forever. So. That's one I didn't know as well. So very interesting. I found it. I found it fascinating uh, how versatile it was and and the history of it and and how it was used so commonly. And I think most of us now see it. Maybe you see it in the medicine chest and don't really know what it's for apart from just maybe sterilizing something or or cleaning out or irrigating a wound. But uh, I find that really interesting. That's something that uh, we would definitely all want to have uh, in our pantries or our first aid cabinets. So. Keep an eye for it, eye open for it. So if you see it at the store, make sure you snap some up because it's very, uh, it's very inexpensive. Um, usually it's a dollar, dollar and a half uh, for a small bottle like this. But uh, what an amazingly versatile uh, and and safe uh, chemical that we have uh, access to. So that's great. Thanks for watching. I hope you uh, found this interesting as I did. Please keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families, and we'll see you guys on the next video.